Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. The Church of Jesus Christ presents Pastor and Evangelist Pete Rowe. Thank you, Jesus. All right, I want to welcome you back today. And we do love the Lord and appreciate Him for all of God's people being with us today. And we're going to ask the good saints of God to have your Bible ready as I continue in the good Word of God. And we're going to be speaking a little bit now for the building up of our faith because we've been teaching on the Spirit. And if you remember now, Jesus said Himself, Rather seek ye first first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and then all these things will be added unto you. So we as Christians today, we need to really start seeking God for the righteousness of His kingdom and get dressed up in a, a way that God can answer our prayer, prayers because, you know, He said His face is hid against people that will willfully do iniquity. So it don't pay us to get lazy on the Lord. We need to build ourselves up in our most holy faith. And, and I'm going to ask you now to go with me. And if you've got a Bible to mark it here in the book of Ephesians about the first chapter. And I'm going to begin here at verse 5. You can, or verse 4 rather. Or I'm sorry, let's just go to verse 3. There's so much that goes with this. But we'll begin at chapter 1 of Ephesians and, and verse 3. And I want to ask the saints now, as we're studying into these things, remember faith comes by hearing. And the Bible said contend for that faith that was once delivered unto the saints. So don't just be a hearer of the word and they mean it, but try to be more of a doer of the word. And then the Bible said this man is blessed in his deed. And I found out from my own experience that if we lazy around or we're not seeking the Lord and not trying to get pleasures of Him, I'm telling you, you'll find that you don't get the blessings. And when the Spirit of the Lord is a blessing to people, you may be sitting there a little cold and then you think, well, Lord, you don't like me. But children... The Lord loves us, but it's us. And we need to grow up a little more mature. Now, listen to me. The world is not your friend, but remember one thing, when we catch yourself playing with the world, we're like a child. And Paul said, when I was a child, I thought as a child, I did the things of a child, but when I become a man, I put away childish things. So always remember, Peter said that a babe is unskillful in the word of righteousness. He's just like a little carnal minded feller. And if you find yourself all the time walking after the things of the world, then that may be the problem. But now, we're going to be taking into this book of Ephesians, and Lord willing, we're going to be praying for our needs and, and sicknesses. And also, you can write us. We have prayer cloths, and we've seen God deliver people, even healings with them prayers from these cloths. It don't mean the cloth itself, but it's obedience. But nevertheless, let's just begin today and build yourself up in this faith today. So go with me to the first chapter of the book of Ephesians. And let me start at verse 3 here. Read it with me now and listen to it. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the Holy Ghost. Who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Now, notice verse 3 here. Are you desiring spiritual blessings? Or are you doing and following a lot of these preachers on television that's wanting to promise you natural blessings? That's all they talk about is homes and things of the world. And of course, you're in a troubled economy right now. But children seek first the kingdom, okay? And then God will take care and help us because He said, consider the fowls and all this. He takes care of you, children. But if we don't put Him first, you can play with these men out here with their wealth power. God help them. They'll offer you, man, they're not fooling me. If you study the Word of God, God don't cost you a penny. But He can sure help you with your needs. There's no doubt there. But anyway, let me get back to here. What's this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings 
in heavenly places in Christ according as He has chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world that we should be what? Holy and without blame before Him in love. Now notice this. Having predestinated us under the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself according to the good pleasure of His will to the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He has made us accepted in the Beloved. See, through Jesus is the only way you're going to be accepted. In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to what? The riches of His glory. See, that's one of the greatest riches you can get today, is being free from your sin. Wherein he has abounded toward us, thank God, in all wisdom and prudence. Having made known unto us, listen now, the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in himself. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ. Both which are in heaven, which are on earth, even in him. Are you listening to that? That's why you need to turn your whole mind, heart, soul, and strength to Jesus Christ and him only. Leave these other fellas alone. People say, Lord, I don't even know who to pray to. Honey, if I were you, I'd be praying to the one that has it all. Now, let me show you something. When Jesus came out of that tomb and he appeared unto the eleven, What did he tell them? All power. How much? All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Okay, look here. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times, what did he do? He might gather together in one, that's Christ, all things in Christ both, which are in heaven, which are on earth, even in him. See, he's got it all, all power in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who works all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. See, that's the apostles. Now listen to you. In whom you also trusted. When? When? After, not before, children, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also when? After that you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of the promise. God help us. That shows you plainly, you don't get the Holy Ghost in these teachings of men outside of these men. You will not get the Bible God in your life by believing another gospel, you will not do it. I don't care how much they teach us that this big great spirit called God out here, everybody's got a way to him. That's hogwash. They're trying to get in your government with that. But your Bible tells you plainly, watch this. In whom you also trusted when though? After you heard the word of truth. What was it? The gospel of your salvation. Did Jesus tell these apostles, go in all the world and what? Preach. Matthew 27, I believe, or 28, he said, teach all nations. See? Preach a gospel, Mark 16, to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Well, which come first, the believing it or rejecting it? You believe it, you shall be saved. Somebody had to preach it, you believe it, You get baptized, you'll be saved. He that believes not, I don't want it. I heard him, I don't believe that. What's happening? Shall be damned. God don't back up them. He backs up his word. Now listen to me. Jesus said himself, these signs will follow them that believe. Well, there's five of them there. And they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord working with them and doing what now? Confirming the word. Not your opinions, not your pastor's theories. Confirming the word with signs following. And you read Mark 16 
It names all these, casting out devils, speaking with tongues, laying hands on the sick, take up serpents, drink any deadly thing, it won't hurt you. And then there's gifts also. All of this by the Word. Now, watch this. So, when did God come into your life? When you believed Him. The Gospel. In whom we have obtained an inheritance. See, go to verse 13 again. In whom also you trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed you were sealed with what? That Holy Spirit of promise. That's the Holy Ghost. Which is the earnest of our inheritance until what? The redemption of the purchased possession under the praise of his glory. Wherefore I also, now listen to Paul, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and, and, and love unto all the saints. Now he has to hear this. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Why? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you what? The spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That's the kind of Holy Ghost Jesus said, when the Spirit of truth has come, He will guide you. Paul said, I pray that God give you the Spirit of wisdom. Remember reading there in the book of Corinthians, Paul said, we preach to the Jews Christ a stumbling stone, to the Greeks foolishness, but unto them which are called, both Jew and Greek, Christ, the power of God, and the Wisdom of God. Children, you can't go wrong if you'll study Jesus. You've got to learn who He is first and find out where all the wisdom and power of God is. Then you can understand His revelations. See, that's how mightily He is. Now watch this. The eyes of your understanding being what? Enlightened. That you may know what the hope of His calling, <coughs> what the riches of His glory in his inheritance in the saints. And what is, God wants us to know this, what is the exceeding greatness of his power to who? To usward who believe, according to the working of his mighty power. See, according to your faith, be it to you. According to your believing, be it to you. We wonder why, Lord, aren't we getting healed? Why don't we see this happening, that happening? Where's your faith today? According to your faith, he told the blind men. About everybody Jesus talked to that wanted to be healed, he had always said, do you believe me? Do you believe that I'm able? Come on, children, think about it. Why would he say that? Who do you think he is? He's the Word. This is his writings here. And now, you and me, according to his Bible, if we'll believe what we can read then these are our desires also. We can have them. What is exceeding greatness of His power to us who believe according to the working of His mighty power. He'll love to work in us. Which He wrought in Christ when He raised Him from the dead, set Him at His own right hand in heavenly places. Watch this. For above all principality, power, might, dominion, and every name that is named. Notice that. Not only in this world, see, but also in the, that which is to come. That's why Jesus said, all power is given to me. And put all things under his feet. Who do you need to look to? Gave him to be head over all things to the church. Come on, children. God help us. I seen where the Pope was in Africa in different places. People worshiping him, bowing to him. Nuns priests confessing to them, praying to them. They're about as bad as you are with your pastors and leaders because they're trying to seduce and teach and people's falling for it. Honey, go to these men right here. Paul said, be followers of me as I am a Christ. These are the men that's got the right words. Children, we need to give earnest heed to the Word of God. Now watch what he said here. And has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, thank God, that filleth all in all. See, that's Christ in us today. Now, we're going to give you a little more information here. 
on how to get yourself built up on your faith in the Word of God. Watch this. Go to the, I believe it's the third chapter. Listen to old Paul here. He's a great man to follow after. Remember, he persecuted it and thought he was doing God a good service. But when he got converted, he found out he needed a good service from God. And what happened to him? Go with me. Let's just start Ephesians 3 and verse 1. This is what builds up your faith. For this calls I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to given of me to you, word. Notice that. If you heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. That's a hidden truth. As of a wrote in few words. Whereby when you read, see there, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. How are you going to know these men's works? You've got to read. You've got to study after them. Within other ages, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Now watch this. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs, that means with the Jews, saints, and of the same body, come on, God don't make a difference in Jew or Gentile. There is no two churches. Honey, don't get hurt. Study your Bible. These people run around here teaching you that the church is the bride and the Jews are the chosen. Honey, they're fooling you. There is in the sight of God no more difference between a Jew and a Gentile. When he died on that cross, he tore it all down. So what did he say here? Watch this now. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body, see? And partakers of his promise in Christ by the what? The gospel. Whereof I was made a minister. Now who made him a minister? Study Bible. Who chose Paul? Did he get it out of the sect of the Sadducees or Pharisees? No, he came out of the Pharisees. Where did he get it? By revelation of Jesus Christ while on the road to Damascus. See that light shined about him and he said, Who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I'm Jesus. Next thing you know, he went searching. Children, you better believe this is great privileges for us. Paul said, I was made a minister according to what? The gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. See, I believe in training, helping people. But so help me, I can't sell you a $25 certificate and make you a preacher. Some go as far as ordaining your dogs and don't know no better, or your cats. Watch this. Paul said, Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God, given unto me by what? The effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the what? Unsearchable riches of Christ. Now that means with a natural eye, you'll never know them depths. But with Him and the Spirit, you can search out the things of God. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. Now, since my time's getting short, I want you to drop down with me to verse 14, or 13 rather. Wherefore I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. See, they suffered to get this gospel out. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this. Of whom the what? <laughs> of whom the whole, whole family in heaven and earth is named. See there? All God's people's called by his name. That he would grant you, now here's what I'm getting to, according to the riches of his glory, that's his power, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Children, give yourselves to God. Let that outward perish. Come on. That Christ may what? Dwell in your hearts by faith. And faith comes by the word. See, everybody that's born of God, you are given a measure. 
That's why you need to walk in these waters. You need to, buddy, get in the Word of God, pray, seek the kingdom. Children, I fight every day and seeking God. It's a battle, not from God, but the world's our enemy. But I'll tell you one thing, honey, I've seen God manifest healings. I've seen God do miracles with my natural seeing. I've been a partaker of some of the gifts and works of God. And I'm going to tell you right now, they're as real as these men are. And they're in the church. Don't let nobody tell you that laying hands on a sick, anointing in oil, in the name of the Lord, all that went out. No, it didn't. Honey, let me tell you, James said, any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church and let them uh, pray over them, anointing them in oil. The prayer of faith that saved the sick, Lord had raised him up. That didn't cease out. God still do, does these works. It's people that make the mess. See? But don't think God don't still pour oil. Yes, He does. Now watch this. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that He would grant you according to the riches of His glory to be what? Strengthened with might by His Spirit were in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith and that you being rooted and grounded in love, you ready, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, length, depth, and height. He wants everybody in this. And to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, see there, that you might be filled with what? All the fullness of God. How many satisfied right where you're at? We better not be. Children, unless you are filled with all the fullness of God. There is so much in this Bible that no doubt we're all behind on. But when you get time, you read the book of 1 Corinthians and look how God manifests Himself. Then we can about see where the church is today. But watch this. <clears throat> Now unto him that's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think, see if you believe, according to the power that works in us, unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout what? All ages, world without end. And he said amen. Now, did Paul pray that God grant you to be filled with all the fullness of God? Believe me, children, the more that we surrender ourselves to praying, to seeking God, no matter how hard it gets, children, you're going to come out better in the long run. Because according to my Bible, He said you seek and you shall find. You knock, it shall be opened. You ask, you will receive. Do I believe that the power of God is as much alive today as it was in Jesus' day? You better believe I do, children. And let me tell you something. I'm not going to fight the Word. Whatever God said in His church, it's absolutely right. But one thing is for certain. Nobody has a work in their ministry or in their church if it's a God that's not by the Holy Ghost. You can't speak in tongues till you get the Holy Ghost. See? Now, you can get the Holy Ghost and not speak in tongues unless you and the Lord work that out and He want to give it to you. That's a gift. That's a working of the Spirit. But it's not the only evidence of it. There's a lot of works in God that's part of His Spirit. And, I, and I'll tell the whole body this much, <clears throat> that without the Spirit, we're nothing. We are none of His. I know they spoke in other tongues on the day of Pentecost as the Spirit gave them that utterance. But God had a reason for choosing that work that day. He had 17 nations of Jews out of every nation gathered there. Medes, Parthians, Lamites, dwellers of Mesopotamia, just all sorts of them. Cappadocia, everywhere. And they were amazed because God was speaking in their own tongues the wonderful works of God. And that was a supernatural work because these little people had never been hardly out of Jerusalem and Israel. See, now... The works of God is right. But one thing I always remember, nobody can either be a part of the body, you can't be born again, you can't be a Christian to God. Now I didn't say to you preacher, 
You can't be any part of God except you're born of His Spirit. So Paul was right when he said in Romans 8 and verse 9 that if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. And the Spirit of Christ is the Holy Ghost. So yes, you are born of it and then it manifests when it wants to or maybe you'll get, when you first give your life to, maybe he'll do these things immediately. It's up to the Lord and your mind, I guess. But all I know is that he's right whether we're all wrong. And if I can't read you something in the Bible, then you don't need it anyway. So children, if you believe today, everything is possible with God. It's not men, it's believers. And if we learn to be obedient to the Word of God, He said, you can ask me what you will, and it'll be done unto you. So before we go off there, I'm going to ask the little people listening in, if you're suffering afflictions, if your sickness is up on you and you need prayer, I'll be more than delighted to pray with you. But I'm going to tell you, you've got better men than me or anybody. You've got their words, these apostles. And Jesus said, if thou canst believe. So children, it's up to us to believe Him. I've been healed. I know what it's like to be healed. I've been sick. I know what it's like to be sick. I've seen God do great things with His people. But I'm telling you, you're in the air that Satan's a fighting with everything in him to make us unbelief. We don't need it. We need to believe God. So I'm going to ask the good saints of God that's listening, if you've got afflictions or sicknesses, now I don't do this that often, but I feel approval of God today, and I'm going to pray with you. And also we have prayer cloths. We've got good church people praying. So whatever your needs are, always remember God's got people praying for you. And I know He does. And one place said, if any man's sick, call for the elders of the church. So I believe it'd be a good time before we go off the air, let's bow our head. And you cast your cares on Him. And He does care. So let's all ask the Lord. Lord Jesus, as we reach out with this audience of people, You know our needs before we ask. And we're asking You right now in the name of Jesus Christ to confirm Your Word and to grant healing and deliverance for Thy people, O Lord. As we're reaching out together, God, we give you the honor and the praise and ask you in the name of Jesus to rebuke the sicknesses and to help them in all things. We give you the honor in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So children, we appreciate you. Write us in any prayer requests. And remember, nothing impossible for God. He can do all things. So God bless you. Is there prayer for you? Amen. We would like to thank you for joining Brother Rowe and invite you to continue with him in outreach. Your prayers and support will be deeply appreciated. If God leads you to help in this ministry, please send your contributions to the Church of Jesus Christ, Post Office Box 283, Baxter, Kentucky 40806. And may God bless you. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. The Church of Jesus Christ presents Pastor and Evangelist Pete Rowe. Praise the Lord. All right, children. I want to thank God and welcome you back to the program today. And we appreciate the Lord for this privilege of being with Him. We're going to be taking you into my message, continuing in the good riches of our Lord and about the greatness of God's Spirit And especially when Jesus ascended up on high and gave gifts unto us and set them right in His church. I want to get into that in a few minutes, but I also was looking for Scripture here and I believe I found it. I want to show you something here that in the book of Ecclesiastes that Solomon began to write to us here. And let me tell you, children,